morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm going to present something a little bit different uh, uh, from our, uh, my fellow um, speakers before. Um, I'm going just to present a project that just started in January this year. And, um, uh, but I think it makes sense to present it here because in a way, uh, I'll try to show it, is uh, uh, the interaction or the, the work together between academia and non-academia, not only for research, but also to train the, the, the next uh, um, uh, researchers. Um, the network is a training network. It's called AeroLeshNet uh, and mainly works on or focus on control of leishmaniasis. So um, this is a network, a training network funded by the, uh, the European Union, the European Commission under uh, uh, Maria Slovoska Curie Action Program. And uh, the main objective, and it's a little bit pretentious, as you will see here, is to train the next uh, generation of scientists that will uh, contribute to the control of leishmaniasis. And obviously, there's a lot of labs and a lot of groups working on, uh, uh, on leishmaniasis and training a lot of PhDs and, and, and researchers on leishmaniasis control. But the idea is here that we are going to have a cohort of PhD, uh, 15 PhD students that will work together in different disciplines. And uh, so the idea is that we will have this cohort uh, working for the next three years on different uh, aspects, but mainly to develop new tools to control leishmaniasis uh, around the globe. Um, so why leishmaniasis? And uh, I'm lucky enough that uh, Simon introduced the disease, and I'm not going to take too much time on these, so just uh, a quick reminder, it's the second parasitic killer in the world after malaria. It's a neglected tropical disease, according to the WHO uh, list. Um, it does affect the poorest of the poor, so the, the, the communities that are uh, left behind. And it is important uh, just to point out that this global distribution, and here what you have is a map of uh, VL endemic regions or areas in the world. And uh, an important issue here is that you see it is endemic in large parts of Europe, and this for us is an argument um, why um, Europe and European institutions should lead the research on this disease. We are in an endemic uh, region. I come from Barcelona, so you can see we are really on the red zone. Um, how are we going to do it? I'll say it's a network. It's a large network. It's, uh, um, we have 28 institutions in Europe and abroad, mainly in Europe. We, have, we do have academic, but as well non-academic institutions. And here, I think it's one of the strengths of this network is this interaction between these two type of institutions. Non-academic institutions include uh, NGOs and SMEs, all right? So what we have is nine institutions that will host uh, these 15 PhD students. Uh, this is just some of them. Uh, we have the London School, we have Warwick University uh, here in, uh, in, in the UK. And then we also have 21 institutions that will provide training and secondments to these 15 PhD students, okay? Some, some of them are here. I haven't put all the, the different logos, but if you put these, the different names and the different institutions in the map, just to show how um, uh, complex, if you want, the network is. So what you have is in blue is the institutions that will be hosting the 15 PhD students. And then in uh, black, the partners that will be providing secondments and uh, training. Um, as you'll see the distribution, we have a couple of institutions uh, in uh, UK a couple in Belgium and as well a couple in Spain and then one in France, one in, uh, in uh, Czech Republic and one in, in Portugal. Um, and then the rest of uh, partners are distributed in different countries um, around Europe. And as well we have a partner in Ethiopia and as well a partner in Un United States and as well the Institut Pasteur in Tunis. I'll go back to this map in a second and you have as well a copy of this map in the abstract book if you want to have a look. So uh, we also have uh, very good looking supervisors as well. So uh, we have the network, the institutions, we have the, uh, the supervisors, and uh, we have obviously the 15 PhD projects, 15 research projects that will be, um, uh, that the students will develop in the next, in the next few years. Uh, just briefly, uh, they are divided in two areas, in diagnostics and treatment, which is the main topic today here, but as well we work in a series of projects on prevention, mainly on vector control and vaccine development. Uh, we work in a multidisciplinary and transdisciplinary um, uh, uh, area, and so we have projects that go from basic science to translational 
to implementation. It was not easy to put all these 15 projects together, so we tried to put them in a matrix, and uh, here I just uh, show the projects that are in a diagnostics and treatment area and the prevention. And I'll say some are at the basic science, some are translational, and some at implementation. I'm not going to show, uh, explain the 15 projects, obviously. Uh, you have the list, complete list, in the abstract book if you want to have a look. Um, but I'll, I'm going to just mention really briefly five of them, and uh, I will mention those because uh, in the audience or today or tomorrow there's going to be speakers that are actually related to those. Um, just briefly, just first one uh, is a project led by Prof Professor Michael Myers from the London School, and uh, he's speaking tomorrow. Uh, I haven't seen him around, so I don't think he's today here. But uh, Michael will lead a project that will um, uh, establish uh, or uh, use transgenic bioluminescent Leishmanian infections to establish chronic models of virulence and pathogenesis. Just to show you again uh, the different partners, uh, Michael will lead the project at the London School, but will work with a, a SME here in a, in a UK, Microsense, and as well with the uh, Institute of Tropical Medicine in Lisbon. Um, another project, uh, and it's, uh, this one is led by uh, Professor Jean-Claude Dujardin, who is in the audience, and tomorrow we'll be talking about a project, uh, uh, a Caladoc project that he led as well. And uh, Jean-Claude will work on a, uh, on a project on uh, the estimation of risk of developing resistance to anti manual drugs. Uh, Jean-Claude will work uh, 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 works at ITM, will lead the project, but will work as, with Sanger Institute and with GSK and Julio Martin, who is also in the audience and will speak later, is also one of the partners on, on this project. Um, the third project is uh, the one led by, by Simon, and I think he kind of explained what, what one of the, his objectives is to actually to develop new models for uh, development of uh, treatments for cutaneous lesh. Um, Simon will lead the project and will work with UCL, the, uh, the School of Pharmacy, if I'm not wrong, and an SME, Pharmidex, here in the UK, and again with uh, Lisbon, the Institute in Lisbon. Um, we also have uh, Philip Boucher, who will talk tomorrow about diagnostics, who also leads a project on diagnostic development. And in this case, it's a diagnostic for East Africa. And um, uh, Philip will work with uh, an SME in uh, Belgium, Coris. Uh, and I'm, I think there's um, uh, researchers from Coris present at this, uh, at this conference as well. And will work as well uh, with a team in Gondar in uh, Ethiopia. Finally, the last, the last project I'm presenting today, just briefly, is a project that will be led at, in Barcelona by Elisa Sicuri, who is a health economist. As you see, we have different uh, uh, projects from basic science, say, but as well, and uh, so biology uh, based, but as well we have, uh, this project is mainly on health economy, and it's a project that will be uh, looking at the economic and business impact of the PPP model on the development of diagnostics and treatment for leishmaniasis and other NCDs. Uh, Elisa, who is not present today, but I'll, I'll speak on her behalf, will be working with two institutions in Switzerland, uh, the Swiss Tropical Institute in Basel and Fine, uh, and um, I think uh, Professor Nungu is here as well and will present uh, tomorrow the work that Fine is doing on NCDs diagnostics. Um, so that's just to give you a flavor of the different projects. Say we also have other projects. You can have a look at the abstract book if you want. Um, so we have the, um, a, the network, we have the uh, supervisors, we have the research projects, and we also have obviously a series of network activities. Uh, say it is important, this interaction between or non-academic and academic institutions, so all the students will spend at least six months in non-academic institutions. Um, this is just a map showing a little bit the interactions and the movement of the students between the different partners. We will have annual meetings, obviously, and we'll have scientific uh, sessions, but as well workshops during those meetings. And the students will be, the fellows will be presenting the, uh, their results in uh, seminars at the different international conferences. So plenty of opportunities for networking, hopefully not only for the students, but also for the partners. And uh, we would like to open these opportunities, not just to the institutions that are part of the network, but also to other institutions that may be interested in the, the, the research uh, projects. So uh, I'll ask you to keep, update, uh, keep looking at the, at the website. 
Um, we just briefly, the timeline where we are, we just finished the recruitment of the fellows. We uh, selected 13 out of the 15 fellows. Uh, we'll finish the, the, or we'll select the two remaining in the, in the, in the, in the, in the next few, few weeks or months. So the students will start around uh, July and will work for three years and on their PhD on, and the research and hopefully we'll get results along the way and, uh, and we'll be back uh, at ESNT uh, at, the, at these meetings to present the, the results. I'll say we have a, a website which I promise it's going to look very nice but from next week, it's not online yet, but hopefully next week we'll get all the information on the website. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.